Yo, what's up, bro? How you doing, buddy? So why, why, why are you up so early? It's 12.51. Uh, actually, guys, it's, uh, it's... Jeez, bro, chill out. Well, I'm um, supposed to start streaming at 12. It's not that early, is it? Is it early uh, for you? I was, yeah, it's early for me. I was, I was up all night. I was traveling and shit. I saw. You post a lot of pictures. Looks like you had a lot of fun. I didn't post any pictures, actually. Like, zero. Oh, okay. Let me rephrase that. I saw a lot of pictures posted of you, so it looked like you had a lot of fun. Is oh, yeah. Better? Yeah, it's better, yeah. Okay. Do you, um... People said it. People said it. Do not mention 152 on meth guy. He will go meth mode. I ate 15 grams of meth in one night. I had 17 and I only gave two to a friend and I ate 15 myself, so, you know. Okay, well, that didn't happen, so. Okay, well. So what is 15 to anyway? It's a, lo it's, like a, it's a story that's too long and stupid and drama and personal and dumb that it's just. Oh, okay. That's all I did. Yeah, there's some, I had like a friend that went crazy on Twitter and started posting a bunch of dumb shit. And that was one of the dumb things, so, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. Unlucky. Well, it is what it is. Unlucky. Well, how does it feel to be back? How are you feeling? Uh, pretty good. I mean, I'm just going to, I'm going to far behind. I'm, gonna, I'm far behind. I need to do a lot of work. Yeah? On your Minecraft speedruns? On my hours, too. <laughs> yeah, I know that feeling, yeah. I mean, what? usually, like, I don't have any quotas, right? Because, like, they're so low that I hit all of them. But mm -hmm. since I went, I went, I got sick twice. I went to Europe and shit like that. I fucking, you know, I had, I had Twitch going to do and shit like that. Like, I'm just, I'm just far behind. Like, I'm just so far behind. I don't even have to do. Mm -hmm. Well, all you can do is sit and stream, right? But I mean, you do that a fuck ton anyway, so it seems like it shouldn't be that hard. I don't know what your like minimum hours are if you, if you even have minimum hours to hit. So I'm sure you can do it. Wait, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? You finished 15 times and you only finished twice? Okay, here's the, okay, here's the deal, okay? I don't want to talk about this, all right? I have a friend who has uh, borderline personality disorder, okay? And so she has attachment issues sometimes and just weird shit happens, okay? Um, I went to TwitchCon uh, this year. But before going, I messaged her and I told her, hey, just so you know, like, uh, I'm like very clear. We're probably not going to see each other much. I can't like be emotionally supportive or any of that shit. So my expectations, I was trying to set the expectations low. Despite this, when we, we were at like the same Airbnb somewhere, there were like a ton of people there. And I guess we didn't talk to each other the first day. So she got it in her head that I was like ignoring her. And then the next day, she decided to start tweeting a bunch of like dumb, irrelevant, personal stuff about me. One of these stories is the 1512 story. So she claims... When we hooked up, I think it was like two or three years ago for the first time, she says I came 15 times and she came twice, okay? So number one, that is not true, okay? I don't think I could come 15 times in a day or two. Well, maybe I could have, I spaced out enough, okay? But number two, the reason for, there probably was an imbalance, but it has to do with like sexual issues on her side. But I don't wanna like get into all of that because it's weird like digging all of that out and like blowing up her shit just to like counter some like weird shit that she says about me, but. Yeah, she was like kind of a close-ish friend of mine, um, or was, was a close-ish friend of mine. So her goal in going to Twitter was just to try to like get Melina to basically hate me. And the best way to do that is like, oh, your husband fucked me 15 times and he you know, doesn't even like you. But like, that's what her goal was in tweeting that. Okay, there you go. You happy? Yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, you ever you thought go. about like hooking up with girls that are like mentally stable? Uh, most of the girls I hook up with are mentally stable. You just kind of hear about the crazy ones every now and then. Like, how many crazy girls have been through my stream that I've, like, hooked up with in the past, like, six months? I think it's only been, like, two or three. Just... Maybe. Maybe not even that much, actually. I've done... Everything recently has been pretty good. This was, like... She was, like, my last kind of, like, BPD <sighs> friend, so... Yeah. Oh! Like the other girl. What? Like the other girl. She's kind of crazy. What other girl? I mean, your orbiters, you have, like, a bunch of them. Not any that are crazy. I don't even know if I'm having sex with that many of them anymore. <laughs> I usually just like talk to fans now because they're, I find that they're more normal and adjusted than like streamer people. So that's gen generally been my go-to. Yeah. Yeah. That is tough. I'll say that much. Is it? Yeah. Yo, we're not in Vegas? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah. What did you do today? Where? What hotel was I at? Yeah. Uh, I was a little bit a little bit off this trip. I was at the horseshoe. I think it was like a five or ten minute walk from this trip. Um. It's not that bad. Yeah, you could you, you could see the, the horse from the from the area, right? Uh, you probably can. I don't remember. Maybe yeah. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. Okay. Did you do anything over there? Nope. Because when Cherry dropped all of that shit on Twitter, I just spent like a day or two like damage controlling all of that stupid shit. So it's pretty is shitty. Is that, so, is that so annoying to do? I feel like that's really annoying to do damage control. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um. Well, it's annoying because it affects, it doesn't affect me. It affects the people around me. So I've got to like damage control for them. That's the irritating part. Oh yeah, no, I really do that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And then the first day we got there, my um. The first day that we got there, they lost our luggage in Amsterdam, so I had to go back the second day to the airport and wait for like four hours to pick it up, which was fucking annoying too. Yeah. Yeah, that's annoying. Um, you know that I've never checked a bag in my fucking life, and the one time I do, it gets lost. Ouch. Where at? Um, in, I think, Denver or Detroit. Oh, damn, domestic. That's rough. Yeah, it took, a, took fucking like a, three weeks to get there. It's alright, though. Well, at least you got it eventually, yeah. Anyway, um, did you gamble a little bit? Did you gamble? No, I'm not. I hate gambling, so no, not at all. Why not? I just can't look at the things and just push the button and then slowly lose, lose money over time. It's just, I don't have the excitement gene for gambling. Wait, wait. I like poker, but... What, why, what about blackjack, though? No. It's the same thing. It's table, or slot machines. It's all the same game, right? Well, I mean... Slot machines are kind of like... The theoreticals over like billions, if not trillions, of spins, right? Uh -huh. At least blackjack, you'll have like a, a you could have like a massive strict up or down and kind of leave or stay, but depending on that, right? Mm. So at least black. I think you're probably your slot machines are probably going to be more streaky than playing perfect blackjack. I think you're gonna you're more likely to hit a huge streak on a slot machine, right? Because what's the most you can win in a blackjack table? Like you, right, you get blackjack, right? Whereas a slot machine, you could get really lucky and one thousand x your money or something, you know? I think table games are probably going to be a little bit more steady. Over time, then. Oh so man, I can't. Alright, alright, alright. This guy's a rookie. No problem, chat. No problem, guys. It's gonna be a gallon rookie. No problem. No problem. I, I don't mind. I don't mind. It's a good thing to be a gallon rookie. No, you're wrong with that. So. What do you. Hold on. Okay. I'm being like humble and polite, but what I just said is objectively true. You're never gonna 1000 X your money at any table game in a casino. That's not so, how table so, games so, work. So, 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 so. I mean, that's objectively true, right? At okay. a certain bet size, right? A lot of spots yeah. you'll be locked in at like two cents a bet for like, like let's say you do like fucking 10x on your lines or whatever you'll do like yeah. five dollars a bet even a thousand x right it's cool from five bucks to five thousand that's a great amount of x's right but like you go to a real life casino you won't be able to go through a mill worth of betting really fast on any machine ever a million dollars. I don't know if there are high limit slot machines. They, they are, but they're not. They're not fantastic. Like they don't. They don't oh, go very high. Okay. Sure. But but if you go blackjack, though, you can go through a mill in fucking three minutes, right? What is the on in a high limit room? What's your max bet on blackjack? I thought it was like fifty thousand dollars. Um. Well, my my limits were my limits, and people around me were basically um, four hands at thirty. Um, two hands at 60. I just thought something like that. And it, but he puts it like 100 or 120 k pretty much. But oh, so you're 120 k at the table. Okay. Yeah, but that's still, um, okay. We Thank just, you. we, we think about this way differently. I understand what you're saying. You, you can, you could theoretically win a lot at a high limits table game, but you're also risking a lot. When I think about winning a lot or losing a lot, I'm thinking in my head of like ratios. Like, can you like 10x, 100x, or 1,000x your money? Like, can you win a million dollars at a blackjack table pretty easily? Yeah, you could if you're betting 120,000 a hand, sure. But okay, I understand. You're just like looking at the absolute value, like the raw dollar amount that you're winning, right? Okay, yeah, I can't do that. Um, okay, you're gonna say that one more time because I took a sip out of this coffee and it tastes like fucking rat's ass. Um, okay, I'm saying that, um, you have a, sorry, when you said, when you, when we talk about how do you win a lot, okay, when I'm thinking about winning a lot, 
I'm thinking about the ratio of, of like winning. Yeah, I'm yeah, thinking yeah. like if I bet one dollar, can I win a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or something? Yeah, 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 of course. That, you can only have those types of wins on a slot machine. But if you're talking about a lot in terms of like I just yeah. want to gamble the most and make the most money, that's going to be in a high limit room at a table game, which is true. So like blackjack. Yeah. But like that blackjack you're talking about, you can win a lot, but you also have to risk a lot to do it. But yeah, yeah. I don't understand what you're saying. Yeah, you were just talking about the absolute value, like the total number of dollars you could win, not like how much you have to risk or how much you have to win. I understand. Yeah, yeah. So it'll it'll go like up and down pretty fast which means you can go really up really fast or really down really fast, right? Mm -hmm. that, that, that's kind of why I like them. Because, like, there's a legitimate risk there. Like, slot machines, yeah, it's a risk, of course, to, to play and loss, 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 loss. Yeah, nice win. Blah, blah, blah. But the thrill of a fucking black table in real life, though, that shit, could go, that shit goes fucking dank. Like, it's actually dank. You ever did that before? Okay. Absolutely dank. It it is dank. Trust okay. it. Um. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Anyway, um. Yeah. So what you think about right now? Your mindset. You're a what we call a, um a no limit city cuck. And what a no limit city cuck is? People who play the fucking no limit city games at low bet sizes, and they go for the fucking they go for the fucking one hundred thousand x's. That uh -huh. it is a no limit city cuck. You know what, dude? I don't mind that at all, dude. Because people, they, those ones go fucking massive. But uh, they're grinder games. They're, they're grinder games. Anyway, um, okay. so did you, did you go party over there? Did you go to the parties or something like that or not? Uh, no, I usually just like go to small dinners, hang out with friends, stuff like that. That's usually what I do. What, what kind of dinners? Like I'll invite like you know anywhere from five to ten people, or just like a friend or two, and go out to eat, drink, hang out, stuff like that. That's not too bad. Yeah, I'm like a smaller get together kind of guy. I heard some of the parties were pretty okay though. I heard the Twitch party was pretty okay this year. Which one? The one on Friday night, I think. The, isn't it the official Twitch one? The Twitch partner one? Sorry. Um. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Do yeah. You crazy parties? Do you have any insane times or? Nah, I just went to um, the excess and it was it was okay. It was yeah. nice. I just drank too much and shit. It got kind of like fucked up. Do you, um, are you like a member of any of the casinos? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good at least. Cause you get like free rooms and shit if you're, especially if you're a high shit. level player. Shit. I get the fucking, I get the suites and the villas and shit. It's kind of dank. Yeah. I think it's kind of fun. Yeah. Well, whenever you hit that cusp of like, um, there's like a cutoff, like, like 500k, then you, mm -hmm. you get into like the, like, like, like the cool club or whatever. It's kind of nice. Other than that, that's about it. Yeah, I, I, I had a bunch of rooms there, yeah, but everybody keeps mentioning that. Like, I, I check in at like a couple of them, but I, I couldn't be asked to go to all of them. Cause... Sure. I mean, why bother, right? True, if you have, you have one, one spot with friends, I mean, why, why would you do the other yeah. ones? You can only enjoy so many so many sweets in a day, right? I mean, what are we gonna do? Uh, I, it just, it just that, bro, I, whatever, 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 whatever. Bro, it's not, it's not like a flex, but really not. It's just, it's just like, it's just that I was just checked in for some reason at a bunch of hotels that are different, and I, did, I had no interest in going into any of them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. How much did you, do you ever post your wins losses, or? Um, okay. Do you so, talk about it, or? Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah it, flex it, on us, let's see it. It was fine, it was fine, it was fine. So I, I got there, I got there at one spot with, um, one spot with, uh, with 500. And it went it went up to like um, like six sixty, and then which is which is good. And then I went up uh, and I went to the Red Rock, and we started with I think eight hundred, and mm -hmm. I, I I cashed out at one point one. When you cash out in these places, do they give you like a cashier's check, or do they give you what? Is, how are you cashing out here? Or does it go right to an account, or? Go to a place account. So you have like a um, you have like a, a TTO right, uh -huh. which is the money that you, that you deposit. And then you have like mm -hmm. a, if you have like a credit margin, then it's there. Okay. And then if you have money on top because you're winning, well then yeah, you could just withdraw. You could just literally just fucking wire, wire back to your sure. bank. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But you're not like walking out with like a hundred thousand or more in cash mm -hmm. or whatever on your hand. Oh shit! That's actually super so interesting. I think that there's a lot of layers to that shit that people don't know about. It's actually yeah. kind of insane. I, I think that's quite interesting because nobody knows about this. I feel like, or maybe okay. people know but they, they don't talk about it. It's kind of cool. This is actually internet knowledge a little bit.
So, mm-hmm. so um, the chips are like, what's it called again? Like RDF or whatever the fuck? You know, like the little signal? RFID, say? the expensive chips at the very least in casinos usually are tagged, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So a lot of nice chips are, are, are tagged. Yeah. And they scan them, like, and they know exactly what they're being played at, mm-hmm. right? So even if you were to see somebody with a bunch of chips, and he, watch, he walks out of the casino, right, and you rob him, it's worth nothing. Because anything above 10K or around 10K, right, you show up with a fucking white chip worth 10K, a 5K, mm-hmm. and go mm-hmm. to the cashier, um, person they ask is, oh, where did you play at? And as soon as you say, oh, I played over there, if I did it, I visible, but I mean, they, they, they just backtrack and see if you actually played there or not. Make sense? Sure, to make sure you didn't like steal the chip from somebody or something, right? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. like, you can't really, you can't really yoink them. And then there's like chips that are, that are like bigger, and yeah, it's just, it's just gonna happen. What are you saying, smartest gambler? Is this chat fucking brain dead or what? Well, your chat is bugging. My chat or your chat? Uh, your chat. What are they bugging about? I know. Chat. Chat today is if you have more chance, really antsy, and you're about me right now. So get them. It's good. Um. Anyway, um. That's why you gave fridges to people. Yeah, I gave it to a, to a friend, and then they asked him like, where, where he played, whatever, and it was kind of kind of odd, but yeah. Uh, it's just kind of how it goes. I mean, th- 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 there's a lot more than that. Okay, I was playing. You ever played baccarat before? You know what that is? Baccarat. Yeah. Yeah, what about it? Another thing. So I noticed that um, Chinese people l- love to play that, that game. And, uh, yeah, Vietnamese people played it a ton at my um, at the casino where I was at. Yeah, Baccarat. Yeah, it's common as fuck. And I, 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 it's it's the game that I like the most. I feel like um, so I go over there, right? I sit mm-hmm. over there. Okay, so this guy. Okay, I, guys, I swear to God. Okay, I have on my on my Instagram. I end up following by accident. So I sit down um, late night at this fucking baccarat table, okay? And it's just me and this guy. Okay. And this guy is a poker player for a living. Plays for a living. Okay. And he's sitting, sitting alone. And I sit with him, because I need, I, need, I need to go fucking put, um, I need to transfer chips. I need to do, do a color up. So I go do a color up, and it's really fucking annoying the way they have to do all the process for me. And I stall his game out. I feel so, I feel so bad about it. I'm like, you know what, dude? I'm like, bro. I'm gonna fucking sit down and just play play around with them, you know. So I'm stop betting 10k with them, and then and then we win, and then we lose, and then we lose. And he's like, okay, you choose our side because you get to choose a side, right? Whether you play bank or a player. Mm-hmm. I, play, I, play, I play bank. He follows me, and it's like win, 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 win. And brother, I swear everything. We're like at like eight wins in a row. Okay, we have one draw or two draws, ten wins in a row. Okay. Then this um, this Chinese lady sits right next to me on my right. Okay. This Chinese guy sits right down his left. So we have you know. And then, for some fucking unholy reason, okay, the lady sits there and she sits out for about two rounds. We win again, and she sees us winning. For some unholy reason, she decides, "Fuck it, I'm gonna bet against him," and she starts betting against me. Okay. So we're all playing. We're all playing banker, and she's playing player. And what that does, okay, is that instead of the dealer flipping the cards over, it's just like it's just like a dealer. She she has to flip the cards, right? Okay. And that's just that's just it's not bad vibes. I don't give a fuck. Bro, I'm not, guys, guys, yet. I don't even understand. I'm playing 10k a hand. Okay, 12. We're about 12 hands in at this point. I'm up 120k. Okay, I could lose five in a row. I don't give a fuck. This lady's next to me. And she starts playing against me, right? First round, loss. Then she starts like, kind of talking to her breath, starts talking Chinese to the other guy or some shit, whatever. Mm-hmm. Does it again, boom. And we start talking shit a little bit in English, right? And, um, okay, hold on, catch me up. In Baccarat, if you play incorrectly, can you fuck other people up at the table, like in Blackjack, or? Um, Baccarat, you don't, play, you don't play the game. There's no play. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right, go ahead. Baccarat is not a game. You don't. You, you only sit there and you watch. Mm-hmm. What's cool though is that what you do is that you look. You you look at the cards, right? Does that make sense? It's not a game. Yeah. Um, 
So you look at the cards, you can, you can kind of bend them on the side and you can see if it's going to be a high card or a low card, right? Because a high card, like a 10 or a 9, you'll see like four dots or three dots, right? But if it's like, mm -hmm. a, if it's like a 3 or a 5, I mean, either one dot or two dots or whatever. Does that, does that make sense? Sure. So then, whatever. And then this lady, bro, I swear to God, bro, she loses again. And then she starts fucking balding it. And then she loses again, and then she starts slamming the desk. Bro, she, she starts fucking bonking the whole table so fucking loud, the chips are jumping, dude. Okay? okay. She's like slamming the fucking desk. Slamming it? Okay. I, bro, it was crazy. And then she loses again, and then she starts yelling and fucking changing. Bro, bro, we could understand what they're saying. And the guy keeps saying, like, oh, bro, I think she's mad or whatever. And I end up just, I brought it, it, there's no end of the story, okay? It's just that I end up just fucking cashing out and get, getting out because I, I felt bad. Like, it just felt, you know. It's, and you were at a high limit table? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was betting max. I was betting as best as I could over there. Um, Weird. Yeah. I usually, I see that usually that kind of type of like ultra degen behavior is usually either in poker rooms or at slot machines from what I've seen in the past. But uh, maybe there are some high limit players that are deranged too. Yeah, I don't know. That, that, that's fucking deranged, yeah. I think the saddest thing I've ever seen uh, at the casino where I used to work was uh, there was a lady. She must have been in her 60s or 70s or whatever. And she was um, she was sitting at a slot machine. She must have been there for like three or four hours, putting in all of her pennies or dimes. I don't know what the fuck. It, was, it wasn't like a high stakes slot machine at all, but she was just sitting there for hours and hours. That's what old people do with their social security checks. And Jesus eventually, Christ. Old people are superstitious. She gets up and she moves to one like three machines down after like four hours. And then another lady, um, oh, another no. lady sits down at her machine, the one she was just playing on, and then she wins instantly and starts celebrating. And then the old lady that had just moved, like, started attacking the lady with her purse. She started hitting her, saying, "That's my money. Give that to me." <laughs> oh no! It's it, yeah. She, she thought it was cranking, and that's a classic. Yeah. There's the a lot of I've seen a lot of like D-Gen stories like that. <laughs> that, and then in the uh, in the poker room, lots of D-Gen poker rooms, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Po poker shit gets crazy for sure. I mean, because poker is strip PvP, right? Yep. Uh, well, I mean, there you can. I think there's like three card poker. There's like table game poker games, but generally at a casino, if you say poker, you're playing. Yeah, PvP. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Um, nobody fucking makes money gambling. Let's be honest. That's just kind of how it is. If you play I mean, you can make money playing poker, but I mean, for all the other games, yeah, you're always a loser in the long run. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of complete dog shit. Um, yeah, me and me and Aiden the first time we got fucking clapped up. We kind of kind of got snapped on the first time we went there, but it's okay. It it was fun regardless. How, how was uh, I heard you met my good uh, ex friend uh, turned to the dark side, my old uh, student Sneeko. How'd that go? Um, yeah, I only the second the second day because the first day he wasn't playing. Uh, he was just behind me. Um. I wanted to go gamble alone, but then I got to the table at like fucking 4 a.m. and everybody was gambling, so I, I just sat down with fucking Dana and some other guys. Yeah. Um, and Exposed. Exposed got fucking absolutely fucking shredded. Um, and then he was just kind of watching. And the second day, we sat down with um, Ak. You know Academics? <laughs> yeah, I love him, yeah. Well, you actually love him or not? No, yeah, me and him are, we like talk about each other back and forth, but we're gonna connect one day, but he, I think he's a really funny dude. And he's like, he's pretty self-aware. Like he does dumb shit sometimes, but he knows he does dumb shit. So I like, I like Ak a lot. I think he's funny as fuck. Yeah, um, he, yeah, he's funny as shit. Bro, mm -hmm. it, it was, it was so funny. Um, but yeah, I, I just said a story earlier, but, um, we went to the table, right? And then, and then he was talking about like, like my situation and I kind of brushed off because I didn't want to talk about it. And, mm -hmm. and then he said, Bro, all this is happening, man. Um, and he said, you didn't even cheat on the bitch? I am said, no. He's like, what the fuck? And he said, why? You, you, you at least hit the bitch, right? I'm like, no. And he said, not even a little bit? I was like, no, what is wrong with this guy? What is, but just the way, the way he says it, the way he just said it, yeah. it was just so fucking funny. He's like, in the, yeah. most, in the, most, in the most accurate possible, you know? Yeah, I can, you I should can. go on his uh, show sometime or do an interview. He's a funny fucking Oh, dude. I interviewed him already. He's fantastic. Oh. Oh, well, there you go. Damn, nice. He gave me his, his life story. Um, <laughs> Have you watched any videos of him talking about his... I don't know if it's his current girlfriend or his ex-girlfriend. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's probably... Where, she, where she fakes taking the... Where she fakes the abortion twice. <laughs> 
Oh my god. I like DJ. I think he's fucking funny. I don't know if he's still with that same girl or not, but yeah. That guy's. His life is a. He's a funny dude. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. And then. Um, I didn't want to be like mean spirited, but I tried to like call. Um, you know, not like a call out, but like a friendly call out to Sneeko about like, you know, him being a little bit of a hypocrite. That makes sense, right? About like yeah. kind of trying to represent like a big like red pill, like super kind of male behavior and shit and, and kind of going against all of his principles like on a daily. Right? Oh, you're saying that the Muslim that's now like doing live streams and shit from the casino is not a good look? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then his answer was that, um, his answer was that um, he just didn't want to influence the kids poorly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is your is, is your funny days or not? No, we're not. No, he's just on. He's just like maximum clout mode. Worse than Hassan. Okay, that guy is. Seiko's brain is wired for clout seeking. But he's doing a really good job. I'll give him that. The dude got fucking axed off YouTube, and he still managed to stay relevant. He still managed to network like crazy. He's managing to get into all the right rooms with all the right people. He's still making content. So you know, he's held on better than I thought he did. A few months ago, I thought he was just gonna die because it seemed like he was like in a rut and pretty depressed. Uh, but yeah, he's managed to keep building. So good for him on that. You know what? I think I think most of the red pillars um, stand for nothing. That's it. Mm, I think the I think there are a few. Like I feel like the fresh and fit guys feel pretty strongly about their shit. But um, a lot of the other yeah, people came they, in to they, grab that they, they, Yeah, but they'll uphold it in private. No shot. I don't. I refuse to believe oh, it. Oh, that well, that's a different thing. Yeah. No, you're probably right there. Maybe yeah. But like like what they call people weak for, and then don't do this, don't do that in private. Mm -hmm. You know for a fact they do it. Like it's just how it is. Um, Maybe, they, yeah. They, Depends on what you're talking about, but yeah. They, they cave into their own urges and their own weaknesses. Uh, sure. Which I think is kind of sad because I think when you have such strong beliefs, you have to really hold strong on that and really be above. Like, that's that's the risk. It's what I was trying to say to Sneeko, is that I kept telling him that something that I realized, like, in about the middle of my career, is that there's a price for standing for certain things, right? And I didn't get that for a long, for the longest time. Such as, oh guys, like, oh I'll never run ads or whatever, right? At the time, mm -hmm. and then Twitch put like the put, Twitch put, put the the fucking the quotas on us, right? And yeah. they jacked up the fucking prices. They it made the deals, and at the point it was like, you had to like shake the devil the devil's hands. That makes sense. Right? Yeah. So, and, like I said, like, I don't really like gambling that much. I don't think I would ever take a gambling sponsor. But, I mean, like, if State came up to me and was like, listen, two years, $150 million. <laughs> bro, we're going to be gambling 24-7. I'll be gambling all day. Yeah. It, it, yeah, there's, like, there's going to be a dollar where you change your viewpoint. I don't think the issue is having, like, strong values or rough, like, hard to adhere to principles or anything. I think the issue is when you get really judgy about other people. That's the triggering part. And I think that's the thing I always hated about Sneeko. Like, if Sneeko was just like, I'm going to try to be Muslim, guys. This is what I'm going to try to do. This is my grind. And, you know, he fucks up every now and then or fucks up a lot. It's whatever. It's when you try to stick to something and then you start judging everybody else hardcore for it. Right? Like, oh, like, you should never do that. Fuck you. Like, I'm so much better than you. Because then when you see that person fuck up, it's like, okay, well, hold up, motherfucker. Okay, you were coming down really hard on me for this shit. And now you're in the same spot. Fuck you. Right? I think that's what builds True. or fosters the resentment. Yeah. And I, you know what? For all the things that I don't like Moon Moon for, right? You know Moon Moon? You know, you know, you know, you know that guy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Well, yeah, bald friend. Hell yeah. That's something that um, I respect him a lot for. So he said he never takes sponsorships for games because streamers are paid a lot of money. And mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't take sponsors, right? And I always mm -hmm. said, I, once I understood I said, yeah, there's a price for saying things and, and upholding that, right? And the mm -hmm. price of that is that if you say never take sponsors, you don't never take sponsors, right? And you probably lose a lot of money. And yeah. he actually upheld that. And then I realized right. that like sometimes you can do something like that and actually uphold it and be okay with the price of it. And then without sounding and looking bitter and just doing that. And I gotta, yeah. I, I, I have a lot of respect for that. And yeah. then, I think that taught me a good lesson to have somebody around that actually stands for something. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I agree. Because it's very rare that people stand for something and have a, a big price over it and they don't go for the price. Because most of us, 99%, I'm going to say how it is, 9% of, uh, of, of us, at least young adults, all go for the price. True, depending on your situation and everything, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it depends, but yeah. And you can sugarcoat it as much as you want to. Oh, it's, it's for my family. Oh, it's for my kids. Oh, it's whatever, right? And all people say, oh, yeah, but this guy took deals because he's got kids. Yeah, but, like, still, I don't think that's, I don't think that's, there's ever really a, a massive excuse. It softens the blow a little bit, 
still a bridge of integrity. I mean, like I said, I think it really depends on your situation and everything, right? Like, I'll say, for instance, like, uh, usually when I talk about, like, I won't do these types of sponsors, I wouldn't do this, I'll usually qualify it and say, I do that, but I can only afford to do that because I'm a, I'm a pretty big creator. Oh, yeah. Right? If I, if I had, like, 200 concurrent viewers and I, you know, still have Nathan and everything else in my life, and somebody comes by and offers me, you know, like, a $500 a month sponsorship, well, fuck, if I'm a 200 viewer Andy, I'm probably taking that. Like, this money might be the difference between me having to stream, like, 14 hours a day and, like, 10 hours a day. You know, it, it super depends on the position you're in and everything, too, so, yeah. Like I said, it's good to have values and principles and, like, to advocate for them, but just don't be... When people get, like, ultra judgy on everybody else for it, I just think it's really cringe, especially if they fuck up, too, yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, I heard... Are you a fellow... I'm a... I finally got diagnosed with ADHD, and I'm on a, I'm on drugs now. I heard you're a fellow druggie user. Yeah, so what? What do you, um... What do you take? Are you on Vyvanse? I think, I think all of it. All of it? What, at the same time? That's fucking right. Oh, wait, are you like on a on a good like prescription track or are you like on a, a drug abuser track? <laughs> Shit, I'm not fucking tell you that. What the fuck is on to you? <laughs> okay, never mind. I mean I mean uh, I've I've tried all of it, just don't get me wrong. I've um I've been I've been on uh, the the early days. The early uh, the early like like almost almost trial days really. So the products I take I took at, at the time were like they kinda of just came out. So okay, I, gotcha, I, I, gotcha. I, I almost looked like a guinea pig at times. Bro, I remember that one time I was in fucking. Um, you know, I used to never tell these stories to chat because they're fucking. They're yeah, I see. My chat's all spamming at me that you don't like talking about your prescription, so I didn't know that. So. Oh, that's you know whatever. What I'm you're fucking. But okay. way back when, I had, I had summer school, and I was failing really fucking badly. Okay, it was it was mm -hmm. miserable. I, I had summer school every fucking year and never stopped. Um, year one, two, three. Sometimes I had summer schools for two classes. And then I just kept trialing all these fucking, all these medicines or whatever. And I, I kept getting headaches. I kept, it wasn't working. I kept like fucking zoning out and fucking being like a zombie. Mm -hmm. And at one point, they gave me this fucking, they gave me this fucking pill, bro. And I swear to fucking God, okay. I take this shit, okay. Like always, because I, at the point I had tried six of them. Six different products. Jesus. And I go to school. And I go to the fucking class, okay. And I'm in math. I'm in math first class. It's like 8 a.m. in the morning. Sit down in my chair, bro. And I'm doing this, I'm doing this fucking, I'm doing this, this exercise. And I'm zoned the fuck in, right? And then, like, I start fucking, I, I, it's, I, I'm tickling, like, I'm, I'm, I'm being tickly, and I wonder what's going on, okay? I have mm -hmm. fucking, I, I have never sweated my entire life. I've never sweated ever, right? I don't, I just, I, body sweat is not something I just do a lot. Okay. I noticed that I had fucking sweat drops running down my ribs, on both sides, right? Cause okay. I was fucking tweaking, like, okay. brother, I was fucking tweaking, okay? Zone the fucking bugging on a stack, and I was chewing those fucking math puzzles like a fucking genius, bro. It was insane, and that's what I knew, bro. That's what I fucking wanted, okay? That right there, boom. And I never had summer school ever, ever after that. Never fucking brought a, I never brought a fucking book home. Never bought a, never did a homework at home. Did they never ever, took um, a study, and I passed all my fucking classes, and I got awards for excellence and improvement across the board until I graduated. Do you, um, do you ever talk about what that prescription was, or do you not mention the name? I don't mention names. I don't, I don't like the name. No. I, I, I don't want to alienate and invalidate inval 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 people's success based on what they think. I think that's kind of unfair. You don't want to wait. You don't want to what? Alienate and invalidate people's success based on what they take, and make them feel, make them feel lesser for it. Why would that happen? Or why would they, that's their problem, not your problem. Yeah, well, I mean, shit, I'm not doing that. Okay. Guys, I don't want people to hear certain names and be like, people go to their friends' rooms and be like, dude, you take this, dude, that's like a freaking cheat code, that's so, so unfair, blah, blah, and be that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be somebody who spreads that. I don't think it's very, I don't think it's fair. Um, I, it's, just my, it's my own philosophy. I don't want to do that. You feel? It's not, it's not like a fucking... Well, no, I mean, like, that's the whole reason why you take amphetamines, is to get, like, your brain more in line so that you are doing better than you were before. That, isn't that, like, the entire point? <laughs> it's to... that, so that, 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 that's what corporate America wants you to think. That, that's a big part of wants you to think, okay? The reality is, I'll tell you straight up, um, it's just a blame massive fucking corporate lie. <laughs> okay? What? You don't, you, you're not, you don't take these products to go, to be up to par with others. It, it, this, that shit doesn't, doesn't make you, like, in line with everybody. It gets you ahead. Like, once you understand that, you're gonna, you'll, you'll, be a, a, you'll be better for it. Trust me. 
Okay. okay. There's like absolutely no uh, like research data or anything to support that idea whatsoever. But I mean, if you want to think that, that's fine. But oh, I mean, you're wrong. I mean, it's what it's to tell you. I, I mean, I'm not wrong. I mean, I, my kids on these drugs and I am on these drugs. Not a lot of research on it. But I mean, hey, listen, if you've got a personal feeling about it, like don't let me <laughs> don't let me talk you down from it. But a personal feel. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Even in your chat says that's not coping. Is it? Even in your chat says you're wrong. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Oh, well, if Chas doesn't cope, then fuck me, you know. Jesus. Such cope, yeah, this, this, in your chest going, you know, you know you're wrong about that. Like, brother, brother, like, the fucking, the imbalance you have, okay, on your fucking prefrontal cortex, okay, some uh -huh. fucking amphetamines isn't gonna make you normal like everybody else, okay? Your nervous, your, your, you have a central nervous system stimulator, okay, mm -hmm. in your fucking, in your bloodstream, you're not up to par. You're fucking tweaking. Like, I don't know what you're on about. Uh, am I crazy here? Like, chat, can you guys like, back me up on this? Christ. Well, I think the, the idea is just that people whose brains, we would say, are ADHD have uh, a, a very, very, very high requirement for dopamine. They, like, they constantly need stimulation, and this results in much higher impulsivity than like an average person. And the idea behind taking a stimulant or an amphetamine is to make it so that your brain requires less of that stimulation, so you just have better impulse control. That's all it's supposed to do. That's all it's supposed to help you with. It's like impulse control, essentially. So if you take an amphetamine as an ADHD person, and then you feel like you're way more in control of yourself, or you can focus better, that's just supposed to feel like what a normal person's brain ordinarily feels like. It's not, it doesn't make you superhuman. It doesn't make you smarter. Like an amphetamine isn't gonna like give you information. It's not the limitless drug. I feel that that's like saying um, I I need to get like an enhancer because my my biceps aren't very strong, right? And you think an enhancer that works for your entire body, and like yeah, guys, look, my biceps are right now right now my biceps are exactly like yours. That now we're we're on par. Okay, what about the rest of your body? Shit, you're running way faster. Now when you see like amphetamines don't help you with everything else. They don't help you with like memory retention. They don't help you with, it's not like amphetamines boost everything else. All amphetamines should do is give you more executive function. So you can choose to do what you want to do. That's all they should help with. They don't, they don't, don't boost your whole body. They don't help with a whole bunch of other things. Like what do you, what, what else do you think amphetamines help you with? Um, all right, if you want to think that, I think you should give it a Google search. I, a quick Google search will help you there. It will, it will help you there. Okay. I mean, literally. Am I, am I, yeah. I don't think I'm insane here. Yeah, you didn't even just, just Google it. Literally. literally. Wait, no, I, th I think you're paraphrasing me. You think I'm paraphrasing you? No, I think the chat was paraphrasing me. No, you guys, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, he's partially right, but the app didn't try. God, I'm pretty sure I'm right about this. You're wrong. I'm a human R word. That's not very nice. Here, can I can I tell a quick, a super quick story that I got from an email that changed my thinking on this quite a bit? Sure. Uh, it's gonna sound it's gonna sound like I'm sucking myself off a lot. Okay, ready? Um, I think that there are. I think that there are. Would you consider yourself like more intelligent than average? Yes. Okay, I think I'm above average intelligence, okay? I don't think I'm like 190 IQ or anything, but I think I'm like decently intelligent. I think that um, somebody emailed me and they said, one of the big issues you run into when you consider starting drugs for ADHD is that when you take a drug, you feel like you're superhuman. And then you look at other normal people and you try to compare your new work ethic on the amphetamines to like the ordinary people. And he said that, and one of the things his email I said was like, well, if you're actually like a decently average, or if you think you're above average intelligent person, then if you take an amphetamine and then you compare yourself to a normal person, you're not really doing an accurate comparison. You should compare yourself to like a group of people that you think you're probably more in line with. So if you take an amphetamine and now you're comparing yourself to somebody that's taking like algebra in college, well, of course you're gonna feel like you're superhuman. But if you imagine that you'd be more on par with like maybe like somebody in law school or maybe somebody who's like studying engineering or some other thing, and you think like, okay, well, would I, would I expect a person who's going to school at that level to be able to read for six hours? Well, the answer in my brain, I think probably, yeah, I would expect them to be able to read for six hours. I think when you start doing comparisons to people that are more similar to you, neurologically, I guess, or intellectually or whatever, I think that the, the drugs seem way less like magical than if you compare yourself to like super like rudimentary, ordinary, or like, 
Yeah. Like lower achieving mm-hmm. people, I guess, right? Because people mm-hmm. people will like take people will take an amphetamine and then they'll be like, oh well, shit. Like you know, I feel like uh, I feel like I can read a book for like six or seven or eight hours. Yeah. Every single person that does like post grad work or goes to college and takes like hard majors reads a lot like every day. You know, it's not like uh, it's not like that's not like a superhuman thing. That's just a decently intelligent person who wants to focus. I understand on something. what you're saying. I'm just telling. Sure. I'm I, okay. So that makes a lot of sense under normal circumstances, right? Mm-hmm. What are if you think about an, an average college student that will go to their college class at 8 a.m. in the morning, right? Mm-hmm. Think about everybody. Do you think that they, at 8 a.m. in the morning, are a human that you would you would assume would, that, that you would quantify as average or in normal circumstances? Do you? Um, I can Are you fixated on the college part? Or no, 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 no. I'm, 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 I mean, I mean, you're waking up 8 a.m. in the morning. You get me through your class. Is that mm-hmm. your is that your average? You would say, uh, if you were to make a a, a a research on a group, would that be like the most normal function somebody can have? Eight in the morning, college student. I, I can't tell if you're focused on. Okay, well I'm, so, well, I'm, well, I'm saying is that. No, 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 you're, it's not that. Are you focused on the eight a.m. part or the college student part? I don't because you're saying eight a.m. college student. I don't I'm just saying I'm on. saying I'm saying all of it at the same time. All of it. They're, they're, they're probably oh. sleep deprived, right? They're probably um, malnutrition because they probably didn't eat as much and they probably didn't have time for breakfast, right? They're probably under stress. They're probably a lot of things. Now they're not like really uh, performing up to par with what you would Maybe, think is but standard. Isn't 8 a.m. when all of us go to school? Isn't that Ex- like the normal school start time? Exactly. That's what I'm telling you. I'm just saying like overall, yeah. if you say okay. how well is somebody, somebody supposed to function, right? And how, how well are you supposed to function uh, uh, if, if you're like uh, fucking sleep deprived or whatever in the morning, right? Mm-hmm. What I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is... Just my personal experience, okay, personal experience. I think it's a big deal to like put you in line to really like put on your glasses to have that in the morning, right? At 8 a.m. when the shit fucking kicks in, right? And you're wired the fuck in, you're far, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm gonna say how it is. You are far ahead of everybody else, okay? By a long shot. Doesn't matter how much fucking caffeine the other guy took, how much whatever the fuck, okay? If you, you wake, if you wake, if you woke up 6.45 before you commute to school and you took it, and you, it kicks in at like 8 a.m. when you get to school, you are performing much, much, much above at, uh, above of your peers by a long shot. It's not even close either. Yeah, I, you're you're okay. sparked away. I agree, I agree with you there, but your comparison is not even. You're talking about if you take a bunch of sleep-deprived people and then you throw one dude on amphetamines at a certain time, can he like survive on less sleep for a while? Yeah, sure, with massive long-term health consequences. But that, that that's I mean, but the other people could also just go to sleep earlier, right? You you literally just described f- bro, bro, you cannot be you, you cannot be this out of touch. Your average fucking non-rich caution these days, right? On a fucking budget, that's what their life is. They are sleep deprived. They are waking up tired. They are waking up fucking with not with not enough food and shit like that. That's just that's just kind of how it is. Your average person is deprived and is tanking health consequences on uh, across the board for their future. That's just how it is. Like. Ignoring that is insane. That has nothing to do with like any of the conversation. Of yes, you should be on because, the because the medicine be, will you're just you're cut right through that. Compa- yeah, but you shouldn't be comparing yourself to a sleep deprived person and you shouldn't be comparing yourself to your own sleep deprived state. Like, if I'm doing an amphetamine, like I am now, I'm not thinking like, God, this drug helps me so much because I can get two hours of sleep and be wide awake the next day. That would be fucking retarded. There's a whole host of drugs I could do if I wanted to artificially shorten the amount of time I'm sleeping, of course. You're supposed to be pointing, uh, you're supposed to be comparing it to yourself in your optimal state. Like, okay, once I've had eight hours of sleep and then I wake up and I do work, what's the difference between that versus when I'm medicated? That's what the comparison is supposed to be. Why the fuck would you compare yourself to somebody sleep deprived? I can think of like a million different types of drugs that give you a huge advantage if you want to compare yourself to people that are ruining their fucking health. Of course. So if some guy, so if some guy fucking was awakened for the same time as me last night and had to wake mm-hmm. up at the same time as him the next day, right? Yes. Well, he's, yes. he's getting his cheeks, his cheeks fucking clapped raw. If wait, say that again. If if somebody right did the same sort of workload as me on a certain day and he goes to sleep at the same time as me, right? And we're all in the same the same heavy workload and we wake up in the morning or the next day and we have to wake up at the same time, right? Well, I'm gonna win. Why? Why? Because I have that, and he doesn't. I, 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 think it, I think there are lots of things you can do. Like, I'm a super morning person. Even without drugs, I'm a very big morning person. If I wake up at 8 a.m., 
by like 8.15, I'm going to be ready to go. I, I think that different people might be morning or evening people. That probably has more to do with your like oh. circadian rhythm, how much sunlight you get into the day. But no, you don't. Hold on. It's not normal that you need a drug to be a morning person. You, If you're a healthy human being, you should be able to wake up, see the sunlight, get a drink of water. And in about like 15, 20 minutes, you're awake and ready to go just as much as you would be against another dude that's on fucking amphetamines. Of course you should be. You know what? If you can't do that, if you're groggy for hours after waking up, then you're either something is fucked up with your diet. You're not getting enough exercise throughout the day. You're right. Um, or you you're right. You're right. But again, I don't think I don't think that you um you you seem like a like a decently at least well balanced person. In that case, most people are not. I I wish sure. I understood that. You're That's, I do. Hold on. I do understand that. But I'm not here advocating for. Uh, somebody that is sleep deprived with a poor diet and horrible habits and their whole life is fucked up I'm not advocating for that person to hop on amphetamine so that it fixes their life. That would be retarded Obviously, it, I'm just saying it's a it's a de facto crutch and you believe it or not That's just you can reality. call it a de facto crutch But the reality is is if your brain is super fucking impulsive You can go through your whole life thinking like oh well, I'm not gonna take this crutch or whatever That's fine. You'll just be a loser your whole life I mean if you have to if you have to choose between never being able to establish healthy habits never being able to uh, You know achieve at the level you could in your life and never being able to accomplish anything you want to but you'll be like 65 Like well at least I didn't take amphetamines, you know while you're on whatever other medications now for fucking diabetes hypertension uh, You know you're wearing glasses whatever the fuck else I mean if you want to like purity test yourself that way you can but literally all you're doing is destroying yourself and then at the end, I guess you walk into your grave with all of your honor and dignity intact and you have no idea what kind of life you could have led. If you want to do it, it's fine. But just acknowledge that like you're not getting anything besides some like weird, misguided sense of self-satisfaction and honor that nobody else on the planet cares about. Nobody else is going to give you props or credit for walking around like a fucking retard because you won't take a simple pill that'll help you make better decisions. You know what? But, you know. I, I, I mean, I, listen, I, I'm just saying, if you, if you want nah, to do it, that's bro, fine. But bro, for people bro, listening, bro, bro. there's some guy listening, he's like, well, fuck, should I, should I get medication? Well, XQC says it. I should just, like, fuck my whole life up and just suffer through this. I maybe think you shouldn't. That's not what I said. I didn't say that. Sure. But I said, I did this. I, listen, you can literally go to the VOD. I, today, I, I had an argument that was the, the exact thing you just said, right? I said, I said, I said if you were to somehow make better decisions, right, and, and, and take something that, that, that's potentially damaging and cut your lifespan by, like, a, a slight fraction have a, a more fulfilling, better life because you get something you need, right? I mean, I think this is just, it's probably something you should probably um, look as a possible option, right? I, I think that's, that's completely fair because there's no, uh, you don't get some sort of weird fucking achievement for being uh, uh, way down the line that, oh, I didn't, I didn't do this, I didn't take this crutch, I didn't do this, I didn't take this, this trade off, and uh, I'm, I'm just too cool. I, I'm unhappy. Alone, broke, didn't reach any goals, and I'm on my fucking couch and watching me watching TV. But I didn't do that. Like, I think that's a very, a very bad way to see life in, in general. So I do agree with you on that. Uh, I think we broke with you on that. Um, I don't advocate for any of this shit. I, I never. Well, I'm a big advocate against it. You know that, right? Like against what? Well, I think there's a massive overprescription of this shit across the board. Okay, you need to understand that. I have literally, okay, listen, mm -hmm. out of anybody you met, I swear to you, this is true, okay, out of okay. anybody you, you have met in your entire life, I guarantee you, I'm probably in your, in your 1% percentile, a person who has done the most tests or the most fucking, uh, 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 fucking doctor, what is it called, like fucking interview or reviews mm -hmm. of all of them for um, ADD, ADHD, okay? I've had hundreds of fucking, fucking, uh, Full test written, right? Where they say, in a class, I am likely to tap my foot on the ground, one to five, right? Um, the teacher is talking, blah, blah. I'm moving in my chair, one to five. All that shit, mm -hmm. right? Fuck it. Yeah. And, and, and the way in, at least when I, from my understanding, you know, in the United States, the way they prescribe it is like, they don't give a fuck. You could, you could probably just fucking Google a script or some shit like that and get it, get it prescribed in like fucking 10 minutes when it should be a sure. full eval done, right? Sure. And listen, I don't disagree with you there. I, my prescription came from calling a telehealth thing and I, it wasn't even like a DSM-5 like diagnosis yep. list. Yep. I, I'm a, I know the one to five. Yeah, you get a prescription for sure, 100%. I don't disagree. It probably is overprescribed. One thing that I wonder, and I haven't done research on this, but I wonder when I hear a lot of people talk about like bad side effects from ADHD medication, I wonder if that's because they're taking it and they probably shouldn't be. They don't need it. Um, so I don't disagree with you. That's possible. But I think that's like a separate category than people that could like benefit from it a lot. Because I've talked to people that have immensely benefited from it, that got it very, very, very late in life, like 30 plus, who wish they would have had it earlier. 
Um, so I, I think it's important to separate those two things out. But yeah, I'm sure it does feel like that it's very easy to get these types of scripts in the United States. It's probably too easy. I don't deny that. But I'm not talking about like the 18-year-old drug seeker who just wants to get hyped up on fucking Addies because it's going to make him excited or euphoric for a day. Um... I agree that overprescription is a problem, but I don't think that that's a reason to never get it. I think those are two separate arguments. Oh, the, the, yeah, they definitely are. I just so it's just something I noticed, especially in the, sure. especially in the United States. Um, I think it, it was kind of insane. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I never, I never did that. I did um, something called neurofeedback to fix my brain. You said you did neurofeedback to fix your brain. Yeah, it's a mix of biofeedback and then neurofeedback at a at a fucking facility, and it kind of okay. fix your brain up. Wait, did you say it fixes your brain up or fucks your brain up? I fixes it. It's a fix. Oh, okay. Do you think it helped you? Um, yeah, it did actually. Yeah, it did. And you know what? It's actually quantifiable on a on a fucking computer. It's like they could they could literally. It's not like lobotomy, but it kind of is. Yeah, they can they mm -hmm. can they could quite literally um, see at which frequencies your your brain operates on a normal basis um, by like wiring it and shit like that through like some like imaging and shit. And um, what it does is that they test it initially. They see the problems with it, right? And then they kind of do this this feedback training you do and you fix your brain and after like fucking after weeks of it they they redo it they do it again they they um they fucking test it again and they see where they're at and it's pretty dank it's it, I, th I thought it was very i thought it was pretty helpful um you know the way that works you know what it works ever, ever looked at that do I know how it works? Yeah, have you ever, have you ever, looked, have you ever looked into that ever before? Um, I've not heard about that before now. All right, so it's, 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 it's really cool. It's really cool. Right, I'm going to give you a fact yeah, quick one now and again, and after that, we, we, we can move on. Yep. It's, okay. Because it's, 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 I told you this to chat a billion times before. Like, hey, chat, I've heard this a million times, but I'll tell you again. Uh -huh. Okay, so basically, you go in front of the computer, okay, and then there's a part of your brain that's not functioning at a certain... At, they want it to operate at a certain frequency and it comes up to like, uh, like electric, like a fucking electric waves, right? Fucking. Mm -hmm. And they know what the target is for it to be good or green. And they know where you're at, like yellow or red. And they want to, they want, they, they want to get there. So they, they set the quota on the, where it should be at. And they put you in the front of a computer mm -hmm. and they wire your, uh, they put your ear on a, some fucking, some, some pincer and they put the part of your brain on a fucking, uh, like an electrode they put on that that calculates your fucking your your waves in there uh -huh. and then they put in front, they put you in front of a, of a video okay but it's not a video it's it's kind of like um a video that you control with your brain and what it does is that when your brain is operating in the target frequency it goes forward it actually the video plays and if your brain is not in that target, the video stops. So the way it was for me, we had, we had a roller coaster, and I would be on a roller coaster. And if my brain was in the correct fucking mindset, it would go forward, and then it would stop. And it's really hard to understand, like, how do I fucking make it go forward? Like, how, right? Because you, you don't know how to teach your brain, like, yo, dude, make it go forward. That's not how that mm -hmm. works. Your brain has to be in the correct fucking frequency. And how do you do that? Well, it's what's called uh, 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 neural feedback. Is that you get feedback in real time what's going on. So you test out like certain fucking like mind states. And then once you hit the right, the right, the right amount, okay, that, that, that's what I have to do. And you teach yourself to be in that target. Even though you don't, you don't know how to make it, you just try it with feedback and you get there, right? And then... At one point, so it goes forward for like a second and it stops for like five seconds. And it goes forward mm -hmm. for like two seconds and it stops. And it stops. And at one point, you get so good at it that the, vid that the video almost plays entirely. It goes... And then it only stops like for a couple, a couple times. And then after a week of this fucking bullshit, okay, I got into the fucking, in the absolute fucking brain mode, okay, where they just up the fucking ante. And now it's even... Now they add an element of uh, almost frustration or emotional compound to it, which is the motherfucking roller coaster goes backwards when you when you're not in target. So now, like, I'm making this bitch ass go forward with my brain. This motherfucker starts going backwards, and I'm like, 
and I'm starting to fucking flex my brain for this bitch to go forward, and it goes backwards even faster. And it, it, and then it just, it's just like, that's just how it is. Okay, that, that's what the, the, that's what the fucking, the, um, that's what the, the, the neurofeedback is. It's like getting to that zone all the time to the point where at one point you do it so much, it becomes second like nature and that becomes your new target. And then you're always in that frequency uh, by default. That's, I think that's, I think that that's the target. I think that, that that's what they try to do anyway. And, and uh, um, after fucking weeks or whatever the fuck that I was done with that, um, they retested it and I was doing much better on my um, prefrontal cortex right or some shit like that. I think it was here. What were you, um, what were you doing? Um, what, what were you doing or what were you thinking about or how were you trying to change the way that you're yeah. like EEG patterns or whatever the fuck? See that, reading out that's like. fucking, bro, that is, it's, it's hard to fucking tell you. Like it's why it's, it's why it's called feedback is like, you don't really know. You're just kind of like, just testing out your fucking mental state a little bit. Like it just, it just by, it's kind of hard to tell you. You just, you just, since the video gives you a feedback of when you're in it, you should emulate when you're in it. So at first it's kind of random, right? At first you just kind of think and calm and whatever the fuck with your head. And then, then you hit it once and you're like, okay, okay. It's just, yeah, it's based on focus exactly. And mm -hmm. also before all that, you said there's this thing called biofeedback. Biofeedback, biofeedback is like um, where they, um, you learn how to breathe. Because believe it or not, um, in mm -hmm. our current day and age of a lot of stress and fucking quotas and shit and nine to fives and, and whatnot, people forgot how to breathe, believe it or not. Okay? People, um, um, people do like, like they breathe too high up, right? And they need to learn how to do like the, the diaphragm or like fucking bottom of the lungs breathing. But nobody does that. That's why people have very inefficient breathing because they, <laughs> they breathe from right here, like, ne like next to their, their upper chest or whatever. But mm -hmm. you have to um, learn how to breathe in the bottom of your lungs, right? It takes actual good breath, breath. And then you just just flat out, okay? Guys, you could, you could probably just fucking Google me on this. You could probably Google this, okay? I'm sure you could, you'll find it, okay? And I'm not waffling. So you, for you, the, you just- For the breathing of the diaphragm thing you're talking about, there's something that singers learn. Um, if you don't know if you're breathing into your diaphragm or your stomach, or I'm sorry, your chest, the easiest way to test this is you'll always breathe correctly if you lay down on your back and you take a deep breath. You'll always feel like your stomach filled with air. And that's the type of breathing you're supposed to go for while you're sitting up. You'll notice if you do that and then you sit up and you breathe, a lot of people breathe into their chest, which is like a lot of tension and you can't take as big a breath uh, rather than breathing down into your diaphragm. Yeah. You know what? That's... Okay, yeah. Because whatever I, I was saying on the mic, they, they, we were breathing differently. But yeah, mm -hmm. so I remember that. So then, then the, I had like... A lot of the early weeks were more focused on biofeedback because I had to learn how to breathe properly, which was a fucking, mm -hmm. which is really a disaster because it's really hard. Like it, 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 that, even towards the end, I was almost done with the next, next stuff. I still wasn't fucking good at breathing because um, it's, it's, I think it's pretty hard. It's, it, takes, mm -hmm. it takes a long time to learn. Um, and then we had like a little, little fucking like a little ellipse that would, would show and it'd be like, it, it would tell you when to inhale, when to exhale and shit. And then you had a fucking electrode on your ear that checked on your, um, your heart rate and your oxygen or whatever the fuck. And then it would uh -huh. just gonna, anyway. Um, so I think a lot, a lot of that, I think meditation as a whole kind of does a lot of that for you. If you do it, if you do it right, right? Um, I think just meditation, you, you, you achieve all that or the benefits of all that. Um, but you're just doing it. So I, so I, I look into, into meditation, but, um, I think it was a very big eye opener though, that, that breathing right is a big deal because a lot of the fucking stress people have, right. is just because they breathe like shit. Literally like most people have like an extra layer of stress for free that they're giving themselves just because they don't actually breathe properly. It's like, I don't know why there's not like a massive like wave of awareness that everybody knows that there's like an ad about this, like breathe properly. Yeah, because breathing from the top of your, uh, the, the top of your, like, no, not, not, the, not the bottom, it literally induces stress straight up. 
That's just what it does, yeah. Um, anyway, um, I hope that was kind of a somehow uh, informative, if not, and I hope I, I didn't say anything that was uh, misinformation or whatnot. All right. Okay. Did you know that or not? Um, yeah, the, I, like I said, for the music, because I, I went to college for music, the breathing stuff is obviously very important because if you're trying to play long passages, you've got to take deep breaths, and if you breathe into your chest, you can't take as deep a breath unless you breathe into your diaphragm. It's like a, it's a way, way, way less oxygen, yeah. Sick. Um, mouth breathers. Yeah, there's also that. Anyway. Um, anyway, anyway, anyway. It's fucking two, anyway. it's fucking 2 p.m. And I've been live for 12 yeah. hours. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna go say hello to, uh, to the Twitch boys because I didn't, I didn't get to talk to them today. And after that, I'm gonna come back on kick and fucking kick it. Yeah, have fun. Be careful, bud. Oh, do you like the new CEO guy? Did you talk to him at all? You know what? I think he's pretty alright. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, I mean, Dan? Yeah, DJ Dan Clancy or something, right? Is that his name? Um, yeah, I think he was pretty, um, because I don't mind saying it, okay? I don't mind saying it. All right, I'm, I, this is going to be drama, and I don't give a fuck saying it. Oh, shit. Um, even though he's a CEO, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of people under him and a lot of staff under him, right? A lot of teams that work at whatever. Mm -hmm. And ever since the kick stuff, um, I was giving the cold shoulder a little bit. Just fine. I didn't know it was going to be like that. No problem. Yeah. Um, but a lot of my plus ones disappeared. Um, like plus ones to parties, plus ones to TwitchCon as a whole, um, mm -hmm. flights, shit just got it kind of uh, taken off, you know? And on paper, like before my big Twitch contract, I was getting those things and I got the big contract and now that I'm not on anymore, now I'm, I do the same thing for them, but um, like I just kind of lost the rewards, whatever. Which kind of sucks because they made me feel like kind of. Um, Special. You, yeah. you guys say no shit, but if we're at zero or let's, let's say we're at one, okay, and I have something, and then I get a and then and then, and then I, now I'm, I'm at two, and I'm given the same thing, and now I go back I go back to one. Um, I'm still doing my one, but I lose the thing that I got by getting to one. I'm not at zero. I'm still at one. So then, um, guys, I'm not complaining about it. I'm just telling you like, something I noticed, right? It's not, it's not a big deal. I'm not like, crying about it. But what I was thinking was cool is that as soon as he got wind of it, uh, Dan sent me a DM and he wanted to talk, talk about it. Because uh, he, uh, he was like, yeah, dude, like, I don't know why, why, why that's even a thing or whatever. And he wanted to know more about it. Which I think was very, it was like a nice touch because it's not like something that I think they tweeted about or, oh, wait. Then just on stream. Well, then, well, that's cool. At least he's reaching out. That's friendly. Yeah. After cross streaming on the rival platform, I, I have I don't know of XQC not okay. receiving well, hey. plus ones to Twitch events after have fun, uh, other platforms. Um, I don't Twitch mind. And uh, say hi to the boys for me. And yeah, be careful, buddy. That's right. We're good. Love you, bye. Bye. I love you, bye, bye, bye. bye. See you in a minute later. Well, John, I hope some of that combo we had it was insightful for anybody. And if not, well, you know what? I'm gonna give it a look. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, that's chill. I, I can't. I can't I saw him around. Um, uh, so, if Felix needs a plus one, tell him to reach out to me. Um, he knows me. He, he he has my number. So I don't have any problem with Felix having a plus one. Um, because pistols like you. That's why I don't. I I see some things that that farm like too many. Um, too many parasocials just gonna hop on that shit. I'm, I'm over that. I'm not trying to like get into this fucking thing of like, oh my God, this is doing that. Like I called like you see this, we were at this, this, that, and it's more than what it is. And it's like, I don't, I don't chase girls. I just don't. And um, when people have this impression, it's gonna, gonna, it's gonna have a bad look. So I wanna, I'm okay with like taking pictures and having like some like fun time and kind of doing the whole social game, but like, I do to a certain degree where like I don't want to go to the computer and people have like a bunch of fucking 
expectations and thoughts and it kind of uh, explodes in something that it's not. And I think that's just fucking annoying, really. Um, yeah. You feel? Is it from what I do? Um, not anymore. I'm past that, thank you for now. <laughs>